how can you deal with hormone imbalance in this video let's look at situations with excess estrogen levels and how they can be managed first what are conditions associated with excess or abnormally high estrogen levels this can develop for many different reasons illness might lead to hormone imbalances being excessively overweight certain medications and some environmental factors can contribute to abnormally high estrogen levels conditions such as pcos which is polycystic ovary syndrome and estrogen dominance where estrogen outweighs progesterone can also contribute to abnormally high estrogen levels so now let's explore some ways that you may end up with estrogen dominance understanding this is crucial to help us develop effective strategies to address excess estrogen now remember that having estrogen dominance doesn't necessarily mean that you have a very high level of estrogen but rather there is an imbalance between the estrogen and progesterone levels in the body and because the progesterone levels are lower than usual your body can behave as if there are excessively higher amounts of estrogen so estrogen dominance can happen due to various factors such as one impaired hormone metabolism your body may struggle to metabolize estrogen efficiently and this leads to a buildup of estrogen compared to progesterone second environmental factors exposure to xenoestrogens which are man-made or synthetic substances that mimic estrogen can contribute to imbalance these xenoestrogens are often called environmental estrogens because they are commonly found in the environment and can enter the body through different sources so here are some examples of xenoestrogens bisphenol a bpa found in certain plastics bpa is commonly used to produce water bottles food containers and the lining of cans so it can leach into food and beverages leading to human exposure next are phthalates these are a group of chemicals used to soften plastics and are often found in products such as vinyl flooring shower curtains and personal care products like fragrances lotions and cosmetics next we have dioxins environmental pollutants dioxins can be released into the air through industrial processes and they can build up in animal fatty tissue they can enter the human body through consuming contaminated animal products next we have pcbs or polychlorinated biphenyls pcbs are formerly used in electrical equipment and they're persistent environmental pollutants that can build up in water and soil even though they are banned in many parts of the world they do persist in the environment they can also enter the food chain especially going through fatty fish like mackerel tuna and salmon also on the list of xenoestrogens are pesticides and herbicides certain chemicals used in agriculture like atrazine and glyphosate can act as xenoestrogens residues of these substances may be present on conventionally grown fruits vegetables and grains also coming up on the list are parabens commonly used as preservatives in cosmetics skincare products and personal care items parabens have been identified as xenoestrogens due to their estrogenic activity finally there are industrial solvents some solvents used in industrial processes like ethylene glycol ethers may exhibit estrogenic effect so these are environmental factors that can contribute to developing estrogen dominance next stress chronic stress may affect the production of both estrogen and progesterone in our bodies potentially leading to a situation where there is estrogen dominance another factor is an unhealthy lifestyle what do i mean a poor diet lack of exercise and inadequate sleep can contribute to hormonal imbalances including estrogen dominance so now we've looked at some ways that estrogen imbalance can occur let's talk about some of the symptoms and how you can tell or suspect if you have hormonal imbalance and possibly abnormal estrogen levels you may experience irregular menstrual cycles mood swings breast tenderness or even difficulty concentrating there might also be symptoms like weight gain or finding it difficult to lose weight bloating 
and changes in your sex drive which could indicate there is something wrong with your hormone balance. Identifying these signs means that the problem can be recognized early so that we can look at ways to reduce abnormal estrogen levels. So now let's look at some ways we can adopt to reduce high estrogen levels. There are natural methods that may play a part as well as some conventional medical options. With the natural approaches, the first is dietary changes. So this means including in your diet certain types of food which support estrogen metabolism. Examples are cruciferous vegetables like broccoli or kale, as well as fiber-rich foods which help the body break down and get rid of excess estrogen. Next, regular exercise. Physical activity will help to regulate hormone levels and improve hormone imbalance. In addition to this, it's important to explore stress management. Chronic stress can disrupt the hormonal equilibrium. So finding effective stress reduction techniques, and this could be things like yoga or meditation, different options that are suitable for you will be beneficial. And what about environmental safety? Remember all those xenoestrogens we talked about? To minimize your exposure, opt for BPA-free products, choose organic food, and use natural or chemical-free personal care items. Now, what about medical interventions? Of course, these will depend on the causes and the symptoms that each individual is dealing with. But we can look at things like hormone therapy, in some cases, to balance hormone levels. There are also certain medications that can be used to block estrogen receptors in our bodies. In rare cases, there may be some surgical options, for example, removing the ovaries. But this is typically as a last resort when all other measures have been tried and have not worked. So as you can see, balancing estrogen levels requires a holistic approach and it's usually most effective when you can combine lifestyle modifications with medical interventions when necessary. I hope this has been a useful look at dealing with excess estrogen levels. Don't forget, I am happy to help with any specific inquiries that you might have around this subject please send an email to my email health information service. I'll place the link in the description box below for you as well. Go ahead and check out more women's health videos here and I'll see you again soon.